I'm here with Bogdan Wyda, and he is from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And Bogdan, we're talking about opals, but it's not the kind that I like, I don't think. Let's talk about That's your right. research. That's right. We're not talking about the uh, actual gemstones. We're talking about the optical payload for laser comp science. And uh, we are, we are trying to do is put a, a laser on the International Space Station and perform a technical demonstration of optical communications. Um, and currently, in space, uh, the way they communicate between spacecraft and the ground is through radio waves, much like uh, your, you get the radio in your car. Uh, well, uh, laser communications, for a couple of reasons, is able to generate uh, much higher data rates um, than, than conventional RF radio. So um, for the same amount of power that is required, you can get data rates that are uh, sometimes 10 to 100 times faster than you can with with uh, radio frequency. Uh, our particular payload uh, is actually trying to do something that's relatively modest by optical communication uh, standards, and that's because the focus is not so much to show that we can do high data rate, but rather to show that we can do optical communication. So um, the sort of rates that we will be getting is about 10 to 50 times faster than what you would get at home in your typical um, cable uh, cable internet. and. We'll be using a laser that's uh, about 500 times uh, more powerful than this one. This is about uh, five milliwatts of optical power. Our laser is about two and a half watts of that, and that, that's what allows us to achieve um, these the sort of data rates. So how does it work? Uh, so it's, it's, uh, the concept itself is very fairly simple. Enacting it is, is the, the challenging part. So as the ISS uh, flies over our ground station in, in California, our uh, laser will essentially try to keep uh, the spot pointed uh, to our ground station. And uh, to give an, an analogy, it's the equivalent of me trying to use this laser to point to an area that's the diameter of about a human hair from about 20 to 30 feet away while I'm moving at about half a foot per second. So <laughs> That's it, precision right there. That's right. It's all about uh, the precision. And that's really the most difficult point, part about, uh, about optical communication is the pointing because the beam is so narrow. So what do we gain on Earth and in space from learning about this? Um, it helps. It, it uh, increases uh, future missions' ability to bring back more science data for the same amount of, uh, of, of resources that, that you put in. So uh, in low Earth orbit, the upcoming Earth science missions are generating data at rates that are much higher than we are able to bring them down. We're approaching that, uh, that, that uh, point right now. Um, and so optical communication can offer a uh, relief and allow us to bring down much more data. Uh, for deep space, uh, it has also deep space applications. So if you think of a Mars mission, for example, you could have a satellite in orbit about Mars that is able to transmit much higher data rates, uh, about 40 times faster than we currently have uh, available. Wow. So when are we going to see this laser from the station? Uh, Opal is currently scheduled to launch in 2013. So if everything goes well, uh, that's when we will be going up. And we will be operating for about uh, 90 days. Um, and if everything goes well, hopefully uh, even beyond that. It will go well. I know it. Thank mm -hmm. you, Bob Don. Thank you. This is Mission Control Houston. Again, that was a look at the uh, upcoming OPALS experiment that will be flying up to the International Space Station coming up later on this year. If you would like to learn more about it, just log on to the NASA website at uh, www.nasa.gov station. There's a feature story there on it.